What would happen if we took a 3DFX 3500 and paired it with a 1 gigahertz processor? Would it be worth the upgrade? Well, I aim to answer that question today. I'm going to pull the 3500 out of my Sabres PC, which is a Dell XPS T450 based on the 440BX. And it, if you've watched any of the other, other videos I've had, it has been upgraded to an 800 megahertz processor, which we got a huge performance boost. So the CPU scaling with the 3DFX Spudu 3 is definitely a thing. I'm wondering how many more frames we can get out of it. The Gateway M ATX M1000 is the fastest universal AGP system I have. So we're going to swap out the 5700 LE and put in the 3DFX Voodoo 3 3500. So I popped it in and these Voodoo cards run really hot. Uh, these slot coolers actually work really good and they're pretty cheap. So you get like two 80 millimeter fans, set it right next to it. Keep that bag, keep that, uh, keep that card cool, you know? Uh, one of the things that it's strongly advised against is to remove the heat sink off these Voodoo 3s. The uh, thermal compound is uh, ad an adhesive in most cases. Uh, you can remove it, but you risk damaging the, uh, the actual chip itself, the Avenger chip. So uh, everywhere I've looked, they recommend against it. So I'm just going to put this giant slot fan cooler right next to it and keep it cool while I'm uh, gaming. So you may be asking why, why do this? A um, couple reasons. I'm trying to build a glide, a retro PC battle station that can play all the glide games with the Voodoo 3, getting every frame I possibly can. And a couple things. I, I wanted a slot one system, um, but getting a slot one, one gigahertz penny of three is unobtainium pretty much, unless you just want to shout 300 two to three hundred dollars which i i don't and um you know i found this gateway and it has a one gigahertz socket 370 cpu and it came with 512 megs of ram so we're we're pretty much at the maximum it's not the maximum you get windows 98 but pretty much the maximum you can get before it just gets to the point where you can't really see much benefit it's at pc 133 you know, it's still has a universal AGP slot, so I could throw a Voodoo 5 in it at one point. It has front panel USB, which is huge if you want to use peripherals and other things. Um, I'm not a, I need to look into it, but maybe I'll upgrade this also. Uh, I don't think this board can take a 1.4 gigahertz uh, Tualatin Pentium 3, but yeah, maybe. I don't know. That might be a future upgrade, you know, future project. Um, so I'm going to use a uh, 3DFX driver version 107. So I was lazy. I didn't, uh, uninstall the, uh, 5700 LE before I started this. So just going to unzip the, uh, 107 drivers to the C drive. And then, um, I'm sure there's an easier way to install the 3DFX drivers, but this is the way it's always worked for me. So I just unzip or unpack them right to the C drive, reboot, you know, point the installer, um, through the control panel, you can do it several ways. You can do it when you reboot, and it pop prompts you for the to install the driver. That way, I'll walk you through it if you've never done it before on Windows 98. But you also do it through the control panel um, and point the driver. At, you know, as long as you have the drivers unpacked, you can just point it. Also, I'm going to talk about. Um, so once you install the driver, the uh, when you unpack it also comes with the 3d effects tools that tab that allows you to change some of the settings um, for video quality and texture filtering and all that um, and also the tab for overclocking which is nice uh, for running benchmarks i don't like overclocking my voodoo cards but if you ever did you'd have to enable one of the ways to do it at least the only way i know how to do it is enable the 
to download the tab. I'll put a, I'll, I'll go over it and put a description, put a link in the description. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I've got the three defects drivers installed. Now you just go to the, where you unpack the drivers and run the setup and then reboot like two or three times. And then you'll have your 3DFX tools installed. And that's pretty much it. 3DFX Voodoo cards are pretty straightforward um, for the most part uh, for getting them up and running. So we're just going to finish three, installing the 3DFX tools and after like three or four reboots, um, then it'll finally, finally show up in your system tray and you can right click on it and you know, change your filter setting or your texture filter settings and enable 22 bit color and stuff like that. So here's the overclock. I believe it's just like a 3D effects overclock tab is I think it's just like a registry fix, but you just run it kind of like how I'm showing you. Uh, then you get your tab right here. You can overclock and then disable VSync. Uh, no, something to note here that when you overclock, it overclocks the system memory and the GPU clock. There is no way to do it independently as far as I understand with these cards. And so you want to push them two or three megahertz at a time. And you know, you know, you don't want to go too crazy. But yeah, we're running, uh, you can see 70, over 75 frames. So let's go ahead and benchmark some old games and see what kind of performance increase we get. All right. So first up, try and true Quake 2, baby. With the Mini GL 1.49 driver. 640 by 40, we're looking at like a 20% increase, which is a pretty good start. But once we get in the higher resolutions, 800 by 600 and 1024 by 768, the performance gains kind of drop off a cliff. You're becoming GPU limited and um, not getting much more. So if, unless you're playing at 640 by 480, you're not going to get going to a one gigahertz build. If you're using the mini GL driver in Quake 2, you're not going to get much of a benefit here. Next, we're looking at Quake 2 with the OpenGL API. Kind of a similar story. We're looking at a 27% increase in 640 by 480. Moving to 800 by 600, we see about 8, 9 frame difference, so about 7% increase. And 1024 by 768, we finally reach the limits of what the Voodoo 33500 can handle. So. If you're playing in the higher resolutions, a one gigahertz build is not needed. Next, we'll check out Unreal Glide Performance. With version 226 at 640 by 480, we're getting a 31% increase. And 800 by 600, we're getting 14% increase with 11, almost 11 frames per second difference. And 1024 by 768, we are being GPU limited. So if you play Unreal, at 1024 by 768 with a Voodoo 3, you are gonna get every frame the GP or the Voodoo 3 can muster. Next, we're gonna be talking about Quake 3. This is the last, the latest patch version of Quake 3, version 1.32. And kind of a similar scenario in 640 by 40 and 800 by 600, we see the most significant boost in performance between 33 and 25 percent respectively and at 1024 by 768 we get a three percent increase with only one and a half frames which is within margin of error so all right 3d mark 99 the, the benchmark that would give you the bragging rights back in the day and we are seeing a 17 percent increase performance here with from 5851 to 6829 not bad cpu score with an increase of 30% from 11,108 to 14,477. Lastly, with 3D Mark 2000, we're looking at a 6% increase from 3,295 to 3,489. All right. Is a 1 gigahertz CPU something that you should seek out for a Voodoo 3 system build? 
I think so. And if you're playing at 800 by 600 or less, you'll get anywhere between 15 and 25% increase in performance. However, at 1024 by 768, you're really getting GPU limited at that point. Huge shout out to Mark for making this fancy GPU stand to show off all this cool retro gear. And also a shout out to Carl Casey with White Bat Audio, whose audio I featured throughout the duration of this video. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one. Till next time. Peace.